All right, y'all, today for Tutorial Tuesday, we're going to be going over Edison and how you can use it to chop samples and drum loops and help make beats in, in FL and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and open up FL Studio here. And I use pr Edison pretty much on every beat that I have. As a matter of fact, I'll use multiple instances of it. Um, for different things and I'll show you exactly how so there's basically four main ways that I use Edison I use it to chop melodic samples that I pull from songs or just from whatever I use it to chop up drum loops either for little sections of the loop or the actual individual drum sound I use it when I'm pulling 808s from drum kits and I need to find the key and I also use it to help just form the bass line and find the key of a sample that I pull for some random song. So I'm going to go through all four of those for you today. All right, so if you just go to the master channel here, just go to any slot and then uh, click on there and you come over here to miscellaneous to open up in Edison. And you can pretty much drag any file that you want to in here. Um, also, if you don't have any files over here, you can always just click on the file button here and load a sample and literally pull any song from your computer anywhere. Uh, let's go ahead and just find a sample here real quick. So yeah, you can just click and drag. So all you gotta do is take anything from over here and just click it and drag it into Edison. And And then you can use this red little bar here. If you just left click anywhere, you can just drag. It basically selects a certain area for you. One of the first things that I typically do with samples is I actually just change the pitch in the tempo of the sample. And the way that you want to do that is by clicking this clock button here. If I go ahead and take this pitch course and I set it to zero and I take the time multitude and set it to 100% just right up there in the center. When I hit that, it's going to it's going to play the sample exactly how it is. Now, if you want to make the pitch higher, all you got to do is take this pitch course and you can put it up, you know, however many semitones you want. And the interesting thing with FL12 is that on the older versions, if you change the pitch, it would change the tempo with it. With this version, you can change the pitch and the tempo separately, which is pretty cool. Something I just learned. Let's say I want to get this a little bit slower. You actually got to um, increase the time multitude. You got to think inverse on it. As you can see, it goes a little bit slower. Sometimes if you have the pitch too high and it's going too slow, you'll hear it kind of glitch. Yeah, it sounds kind of wonky if you do that. So I would suggest if you do slow down or speed up uh, the tempo, I would make sure to have the pitch match it. So for instance, if it's slower, you need to have the pitch go lower, something like this. And actually, I kind of like that. So let's go ahead and accept that as is. So after you change the pitch and the tempo of a sample, the next thing I typically do is I'll come in here and actually start chopping the sample. So I always use the FPC, which is basically just connects with my MPC. I use Fruity Loops as an MPC pretty much for the most part. So I like to chop up the samples in a bunch of different pieces and add them to my uh, MPC MIDI. All right, so whenever you have a, a, a chop that you like, all you need to do is go click on this button right here. It says add, remove, marker region. Just click on that adds a marker for you. Typically the easiest way to chop a sample is just on every kick and snare. So two, three, four. I guess there's no really there's no real kick and snare in this sample. So you kind of just have to count off and just understand tempos of songs. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's kind of how you can figure out how to chop. So when you do chop, you want to go to, if you click this magnet button here, you want to go to zero crossing. And the reason for that is if you just chop something at any random part where the wave point is at, you'll hear weird clicking with the chops and you do not want that. And when you have that in your beat, it just kind of adds this extra noise and distortion and it sounds terrible one simple way to avoid that is just putting it on zero crossing in the first place now the issue with the zero crossing 
is that it doesn't always work and you'll actually have to go in and uh, chop manually sometime. Let's go ahead and just chop this up here. So one, two, three, four, and I can kind of tell. So there's the first chop, one, two. So you see where it peaks right here? A lot of times those samples that I kind of give you an idea where to chop just by how it looks. And we don't really have a good zero crossing point right on that hit, so. And it kind of seems like it hits late. So if you ever get a point where you get a zero crossing and it's not really where you want it to be at, you can just go to like uh, snap to region and zoom in super close. And then try to find a spot where both of these lines will intersect uh, this main axis right here. Doing some geometry on your nest. So like right here, both lines intersect on this center line right here and that'll help reduce a click. And then I'll go back to zero crossing. So this next one is gonna be right around here in this area. All right, then after you have all your chops made, all you need to do is uh, go to snap to region. You can just select the little region that you want to go to, and then you can drag it to anywhere you want to. So typically, so you can just drag this onto the, the channel rack right here, and there's just a little hit for you. Or I use the FPC, which I have other videos that you can check on how to use that. You can take this off here, slide it in. So just select a region. And then this right here, drag copy sample selection. You just drag that onto the pad or wherever you want to. And now like I was saying, you always wanna have this zero crossing so you don't have clicks in your samples. Sometimes you can go in there, and, like I did, and you can find a spot that has a zero crossing, but sometimes it doesn't make it easy for you. So one tip that you can do if you're having trouble, you can use this fade in and fade out. So let's say if at the beginning of the chop that you have doesn't really sound that great, you can zoom in super close using the scroll wheel on your mouse and maybe like four or five dots here, you can just hit the fade in button. And what that'll do is I'll smooth out any click and you won't really notice it even though it's like a small pause in the sound. Same thing with the, the end of a clip. Let's say it's clicking at the end. Again, just zoom in to about four or five little dots here. Right here is the fade out button and that'll help get rid of any clicking. So if you're like chopping a bunch of samples you hear this weird click and it's not making sense, um, that's how you wanna avoid that click. You want the zero crossing area and if you're working with like a tricky sample that doesn't have a good zero crossing, then use the fade in and fade out right at the end of the chops. That should help alleviate any of the clicking noise for you. All right, next thing that I use the Edison for a lot is uh, drum loops and uh, pulling out different drum sounds from drum loops and then sometimes, rarely, but sometimes I'll actually just chop up the drum loop itself and rearrange that like I would like a melodic song sample. So let's go into the drum kit here. Let's grab a break. Uh, there we go. So we're gonna drag the drum sam the drum loop onto uh, Edison right here, and you can literally just go in and just grab any sounds. There's a kick drum right there. Boom. That's fun. Oh, I heard a I heard a hi hi hat in there somewhere. Oh yeah, <laughs> you notice that. Edison will scroll on you like that automatically. To get it to stop auto scrolling, just click on this little arrow down here. I always forget to click it, but if you ever find yourself just getting taken away, then that's why. All right, there's a little hi hat right there. Here's a snare. And now you got 
Now you got a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat that are ready to go and ready to be played. And the cool thing about dropping it in like that is that you can send them to their own channel and edit them individually that way. Typically when I pull drums from a like a drum loop, there's a lot of editing that needs to go on it to make it actually sound with the song. Usually when you pull drums from a drum loop, they'll have different sounds and vibrations in there. There'll be extra reverb. Um, I always usually just need to do a lot of editing down, which I'll cover in some tutorial in the future. Uh, one thing you can also do is just chop it up into uh, pieces just like we were doing with the other sample. Kind of got to follow the, the kick and the snare, the, the first downbeat kick. I think that's what the kids call it, the downbeat. My uh, actual music training is, uh, yeah. let's go ahead and chop it up and let's make four little chops here. And again, you can use the FPC to just drag those on here. And then, yeah, then you can just play the drum loop in any fashion that you want especially if you pull a drum loop that's not repetitive and it has a bunch of different change ups in it maybe this might be a technique for you to add some variation like that and so all right the next thing i use edison for is trying to find the key of 808 so let's come into this drum kit here and you know, taking an 808 and matching it with the key of the, the melodies in your beat help it sound better, hit better, everything. So to help figure out how to find the key of certain sounds, not only does this work with 808s, it works with any instrument, but I think 808s is probably the most common thing that you'll use it for. So let's just take this random 808 right here. Now, I personally am not very ear trained. I have no idea what key that is. So all I need to do is drag that here into Edison. Click on this marker right here that says regions and then scroll down here to detect pitch regions. Oh, this one's actually a C, not too bad. Let's try to find a different one. Maybe there's, that one sounds like it could be different. Yeah, this one's G2, drag another one, G sharp. A little uh, hashtag there means sharp. So, you know, the black keys instead of the white keys, right? And once you drag this into your channel rack, all you have to do is go to the piano here and right click on G sharp right there. And then anytime you actually play this on the piano roll, it'll actually be in key for you. On top of that as well, um, another th reason that I use Edison is to find the actual key of the sample that I'm working with for the song. All right, let's find a new sample to work with. Uh... Gorilla Ready Pasta. Now let's say I take it and yeah, we slow it down. All right, so I'm gonna slow this sample down a little bit, change it originally from whatever it is, and then I'm gonna drag this here on, oh, this is piano roll, Psh, dummy. I'm gonna take this and drag it onto the playlist and just get it playing. <music> to find the key of this sample, all I need to do is open up Edison, and the cool thing about Edison is you can open up as many Edisons as you want to with this. So if I'm chopping samples and doing 808s and drum loops, I'll literally have like four or five of these Edisons open for a project that I have. So you can actually resample anything that you have already made with Edison. That helps you edit it later. I just laid that sample down on the playlist and then if I select this area right here, actually it doesn't really matter what you select here, I like to select on play. But basically I can record any sound coming from Fruity Loops and then it'll just show up in Edison and I can re-edit it from there. Click record here and then I'm gonna hit play on the main um, song mode.
<clears throat> same thing like the 808s. I'm gonna go to this regions button. I'm gonna cl click on detect pitch regions. And now it's giving me the key for all the different sections of the song. So whenever I'm making a bass line, I can literally pull out whatever loop that I pulled or whatever sounds that I pulled from the sample. I can just follow along with Edison and to figure out, oh, my bass lines in this, or the melodies in this key right here, so my bass needs to match that. So yeah, it starts with C, then it goes to G, then F sharp, and it gives you a good idea of where to base everything uh, off of. Also, another reason that I might resample something is I want to actually add a different layer and an octave to it. So we obviously have this slow down version here, right? So let's say I wanted to take this and I wanted to layer that with whatever else I'm working with. I can just open up um, a fruity slicer and I can drag this into fruity slicer and then go up exactly 1200 cents. Let's see if I go up here, go 1200 cents. And if I play this, on top of what we got going on here, as long as it matches up. Anyway, you gotta match up the time and everything on it, but what you can do is actually create layers at different octaves with the same sample. Sometimes I'll sample, I'll slow things down so much that it completely takes out all the high end of the sample and I want some of that high end back. So what I'll do is I'll resample it, I'll match up the tempo so it's the exact same, and then that higher pitch one plays. I gotta mix it in properly, but yeah. Nice little tip for you. That's it that I have for Edison today. I mean, there's tons of other things that you can do with Edison. Those are just the main four things that I personally use Edison for. Uh, let me know if that was helpful, and let me know if you got any other questions about anything in the video. Thanks, y'all.